Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. Very excited about what we're doing today because today I'm line editing your guys' writing. A couple weeks ago, I asked you guys if any of you had writing samples that I could edit in a video and you guys were so generous. So thank you so much to everyone who sent in work. It is obviously a very vulnerable thing. It takes a lot of courage to just send your work to someone that you don't know to edit in a video that will be publicly available online. Another line editing video has been probably my most requested video for ages. I've done some of these before with my own work. I think we've gotten to the point where editing my own work is losing its educational impact. I think that it would be more beneficial to look at other people's work not because my work doesn't have a ton of errors in it, because it certainly does, but because I think, first of all, everyone has their own unique errors that they tend to make over and over, their own little quirks, um, their own little kind of crutches that they tend to lean on. I certainly have my own, we've analyzed my writing quirks. We've seen those errors. So I think we're gonna get a wider range of sentences and issues to look at and dissect with a range of people's work than just my own. Also, I think I'm just <laughs> better at line editing when I'm editing other people's work. When I'm editing my own work, it's mine, so I tend to be very aggressive with it. Delete whole paragraphs and it's very aggressive, whereas I think with other people's, I tend to be much more slowed down and methodical and respectful because it's not mine. The point of this is not to say that any of this is bad, it's um, actually just to talk about language and dissect it a little. This is definitely not an exercise in grammar, um, this is more to talk about like how maybe we could rephrase a sentence to be more economical or punch up an image a little bit or make something a bit cleaner or more effective, not where does the comma go? Because don't ask me, I don't know where the comma goes. Let's just dive into this. If you see your piece here and you would like me to send you the edited final sample, just drop me a DM and I will send that to you. So this first one is anonymous um, and it's from a novel, that's all we know. Mom, he heard a creak. At 12 years old, he knew what he was about to see, but he pushed it open anyway. So this might just be because we've dropped in in the middle of a scene. I'm thrown off by the vagueness of the word it in this case because I assume it is referring to a door, but that's not clear. So I'm just going to clarify he pushed the door open. Her hair was let down, which it never was. It was the first thing he noticed. He remembered his mother pointing out the window of her room once when he and Joe and her had been seated on the roof of the house a few summers ago. They sat on blankets that were growing old, tiny balls of lint beginning to collect all over them. I'm pretty sure 12 years old is actually supposed to be hyphenated. If not, copy editors, you can roast me in the comments. He knew what he was about to see. I would like to try and get rid of this he knew. So he knew is a filter. Like with anything in writing, there's really nothing that you can't ever do and have to avoid all the time, but I do think it's a good habit to try and cut them, especially because I'm seeing another one a little bit later he remembered. Oh, and he heard a creak, so we've got quite a number of filters here. Um, so let's work at cutting them. A filter, I've got a whole video on filtering, it's quite old though, but um, basically a filter is any word like he heard, he saw, he knew, he remembered, he felt. It, it's a form of telling where it separates the image or the thought from the character. Um, and it distances the point of view. Basically, if we're in a, a point of view, so in this case, his point of view, we don't really know who he is. Um, there's a sound described in the narrative. We know he's hearing it because it's a limited point of view. So let's work at getting rid of this he heard once. Heard is a very easy one to get rid of. It's harder to get rid of internal filters like remembered or felt, but it's pretty easy to get rid of sensory ones like saw, smelled, heard. This is a little tricky for me to edit because I don't know what the creek is coming from? Is it from the door? Is it from the floorboards? I mean, if I was editing this, I would just say, what's creaking? We could say something like, um, I don't know what's creaking, so we'll just go with that, um, but I think that that's something that the author would have to find too, because they know what's creaking. At 12 years old, he knew what he was about to see, but he pushed the door open anyway. See, we, we have a lot, of, we've got a number of filters. We have he noticed, we have he remembered. It's a slightly disorienting paragraph, but I think it's meant to be disorienting for the character. And I also think I would not feel as disoriented if I hadn't been dropped in the middle of this novel with no context. I'm gonna say her hair was down instead of let down, just because, I don't know, those are basically the same thing. I don't know if we have to say it was the first thing he noticed because by the way the paragraph is structured, it's the first thing that's described. So inherently it's the first thing he noticed. Um, I think it's also kind of just, distancing the point of view. I'm noticing that the point of view is fairly distant in this paragraph. It is a young character, so again, that could totally be intentional, 
but saying something like it was the first thing he noticed does distance the point of view because let's say you walk into a room and you notice something you're not gonna notice something and then go that's the first thing I noticed like it's not a thought that I think naturally someone would have he's probably not thinking that it's the first thing he noticed he's probably just thinking about what he's noticing so it's a bit of a distant thought that the character wouldn't really have I don't think so I'm gonna cut it I'm slightly confused by this sentence here because it says when he and Joe and her the use of the word her the way the sentence is structured seems like it's referring to the mother but I don't see how his mother could be pointing out the window of her room when he and Joe and her are seated on the roof like she can't be pointing out the window of her room and seated on the roof so I assume her is not the mother so I'm just going to leave a note and say pronoun confusion maybe use name they sat on blankets that were growing old I think you could just say they sat on old blankets instead of that were growing old tiny balls of lint again it's, I mean, instead of saying beginning to I'm just going to say I'm gonna condense that into a stronger verb so instead of tiny balls of lint beginning to collect all over them I'm going to say pilled all over and instead of them I'm gonna say across the wall the way the author had it before it's not inherently bad when I'm line editing I'm not thinking about like this is the right way to do it and the way it was before it's wrong it's more just here are options um it's the way my brain would think to structure the sentence pure warm air blasted rippling their clothes and hair but slow enough that had you not known you might have thought they were swimming i'm not sure if this is referring to the flashback when they're sitting on the blankets or the fictive present it must be the flashback right i guess i'm confused where is the warm i'm not really sure what's happening in this sentence so i'm just gonna say from where the point of view i wonder who is the you who is the you is it the same as the he i'm gonna cut the butt i just don't feel it's necessary um pure warm air blasted and i think that that sentence needed it needs to be like blasted from the radiator i don't know rippling their clothes and hair maybe this could just be slow enough that you might have thought they were swimming i think the might have thought kind of gets across that when you say had you not known that's all kind of compressed and conveyed in you might have thought might have is a hypothetical she had pointed straight forward and told them that the direction okay so we are still in the flashback she had pointed straight forward and told them that that direction was true north and if they ever wanted to see something magnificent they could sit out here for a whole day and watch the sun like it was someone stringing a yo-yo from east to northeast to north to northwest to west and then gone um i wonder if we could maybe make the verb even more fun and use yo-yo as a verb this is just me gonna i'm just gonna go insane for verbs in this video i really just want to be able to use the phrase the sun yo-yoed you know she had pointed straight forward okay so she is in the main note that i would have so far is that i'm very disoriented about where everyone is and what they're actually doing so i'm just gonna leave a little note again just like i would do if i was line editing for a friend i would say clarity i'm just gonna say forward because you can't really point like crooked forward you know sometimes an adjective is inherent to a noun if you're pointing forward you're kind of obviously pointing straight forward that's the meaning of forward so she pointed forward and told them she pointed for this phrasing i'm finding a bit i i, I guess what i would just call gluey <laughs> like, sometimes i read a sentence and it just it's a bit sticky to read and i feel like and had told them that that direction was true north that 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 is a bit sticky maybe something like said it was true north maybe i don't know there might be a better way to say that i'm gonna also say said i think this, it, the repetition is nice she pointed forward said it was true north said if they ever wanted to see something magnificent they could sit out here for a whole day and watch the sun i'm gonna say and watch the sun yo-yo from east to northeast to north to northwest to west this is obviously not a necessary edit if you really like the idea that it's a person but i just wanted to use yo-yo as a verb i saw it and i was tempted i was tempted by verbs he loved that idea that whenever he wanted to he could look through that window the room that had once been hers and still remained untouched as hallowed ground and see how far that yo-yo had come in its revolution for that day i think maybe that is a bit of a crutch word um in this piece at the moment it is super normal it happens in everything i write to have one weasel word that just appears over and over um for me it's often just and then i noticed just was a crutch word for me and then it 
any time I would normally use just, I started using only and that became a crutch word. I think here I'm seeing a lot of the word that because it says that whenever he wanted to, he could look through that window, the room that had once been hers, see how far that yo-yo had come in its revolution from that day. Like it's quite a lot of that. And that is, you know, it's a fairly unobtrusive word, but it is starting to, at least when I read it, jar me just a little bit. He loved that idea. I'm gonna just switch that to a colon. It just kind of, it's nice to vary the punctuation structure. Gives a bit of a just punch to the sentence. He loved that idea that whenever he wanted to, he could look through that window in her, hmm. I think I wanna try to simplify this. The room that had once been hers, maybe we could say and see how far the yo-yo had revolved for the day, but uh, that doesn't have the same ring as revolution. It gave him a weird comfort when she had said it. Her mother's idea that this son was something in control, just someone up above having a bit of fun. It gave him, okay, I, th I don't think we need when she had said it. It's, cl it's clear that she had said it. It gave him a weird bit of comfort. Her mother's idea, wait. I feel the protagonist was his mother. Okay, I think this is supposed to be his mother's idea. I think maybe that's just an error or I'm lacking context. It gave him a weird comfort. His mother's idea that the son was something in control. Someone up above having a bit of fun. I'm just gonna sit, delete the just. I think then the something someone almost has a bit of symmetry to it. It even corroborated what his father had told him, that the man above was the one who dictated what occurred in our lives. I'm gonna again try to delete this that just because there are a lot of that. I'm gonna say his hand moving all of ours. It was always there and it stood as a reminder. I'm gonna say it just stood as a reminder. I feel like instead of for him, we're in his point of view. It told him to ignore the images of his parents sleeping in different beds, to ignore the pregnant silence each dinner. I'm gonna say the pregnant silence at each dinner. That's just personal preference of phrasing. To ignore, I'm gonna delete the fact, to ignore that his mother smelled like that chemical. If he knows what the chemical is, maybe just name it. I think, first of all, it's another that. If it's a specific chemical, if he knows what chemical it is, it would be better to just specify it and it would probably be a more interesting word. Maybe we could also say to ignore the chemical his mother smelled like. Okay, one second, I'm going back to an earlier sentence. That whenever he wanted to, he could look through the window of her once room, is what I'm gonna say. I would just say of her room, but it seems like the author does really want to convey that it's no longer her room. If it would be clear without saying that it is no longer her room, I would just say of her room. Whenever you hyphenate, it makes your writing look smart. Hacks for you. I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna say what I think is the overarching issue in this excerpt. It's a little difficult for me to fix in every single instance is just an excess of abstract language rather than concrete language. A lot of the sentences are more ideas rather than images. There's a lot of ideas going on and that's great. Ideas are interesting. They're, I mean, what is a story without good ideas, right? But I think what that would really punch up this excerpt would be more concrete language, more concrete images, more imagery to supplement the ideas. Because this, again, the only thing I really see here is the sun rising and falling. The sentence that I thought was most effective so far is it, this one. This is where we get the most sensory stuff. We get the images of his parents sleeping in different beds to ignore the pregnant silence at each dinner. I would love to specify what the chemical is. This is the strongest sentence for me because it's the most sensory, um, but it could even be more sensory. I think this would be so effective. I mean, more than it already is, not that it's not effective with some more concrete imagery. I'm gonna delete because here, just to see what it would be like without it. Regardless of what they didn't say, they had agreed about this one thing. I think this is just a little language that someone above made the sun rise and fall in the same way for all of them, and as such they remained together. His mother thought it, his father thought it, so it had to be true. But after this day, after witnessing her body, calm and twisting along with the soft patter of rain, he remembered not feeling as comforted when he saw the sun. Um, here's another filter, and there's, there's it's kind of a compounded filter because he remembered and again not feeling is another one. So I think something like this, 
suggestion. I'm gonna also delete along. I think it's just an excess word that the sentence doesn't need. It wasn't there to see that evening. See, it again is just an example of the vague language. I, I think I just want more concrete language in here because uh, the ideas are so interesting and there's clearly a lot of character work going on. No longer could he believe. I think this is an example of maybe just more words than we need. Longer believed. There's a sneaky that I'm gonna cut. I see you with your sneaky that. He no longer believed there was someone up there. Actually, I'm gonna restructure that. His mother was wrong. If she were right, could there be any explanation for what had happened to her? He was supposed to be watching over them. I think there's also a bit of pronoun confusion. You know, here in the previous two sentences, it begins with the protagonist being referred to as he, and then here, he, I believe, is supposed to be like God. So God, I was just slightly, I had a moment of confusion there. He was supposed to be watching over them, right? He hadn't thought all those thoughts then, for those thoughts never come in the moment. Again, I think that this is a lot of abstract words and some gluey words like then, hadn't, all those, like the image alone is stronger. In the moment, he just fell to his knees, palms open. Mmm, I like that image. I love that this image, for me it conjures an image of prayer, falling to his knees, palms open. That literally makes it look like he's praying when it's so interesting because this is the moment that he stops believing in God. Again, see, we've got another filter. Her body turned, her body turned, wait, maybe it's, how is her body turning? I think I need a bit more clarification of this image that I think only the author can do. I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to be seeing. Ooh, and then we're gonna get a bit of symmetry with her mirroring the sun. I'm gonna delete this first facing the wall because she's going, she's gonna face east, northeast, north, northwest, west, but what way do, do like do we know which way the wall is? So I'm just gonna say first facing east. Her body turned east. Maybe I'm just overusing colons. Oh well, east, northeast, north, northwest, west, and back the other way. Although at that point he no longer saw her at all. In terms of ideas, I think this is really interesting. Bit of a tricky one to edit, I think, because I think it's more of an overarching issue. My main note for the author, like I talked about, would be to try and replace as much of the abstract language with concrete language, replace as many of the sentences that are thoughts and very much in the head with an image or pair them with an image. Maybe specify the images a little more. I would love to know what that chemical is. I would love to know, you know, I'm still thinking about that one sentence because I think it's the most effective sentence in the piece because it, you get these images, his parents sleeping in different beds, um, to ignore the pregnant silence at each dinner. Like I want to know what they're eating for dinner. I want to know what the chemical is. I want to know what the bedspreads look like. Like I want so much more of that sensory detail. So that would be my main note is to try and lean as much as possible into the sensory detail because the ideas going on here are very complex. And you've also got a really nice cyclical recurring image with the sun. You could even lean into that image of the sun more like um, if we think about that famous Chekhov quote, you know, like, don't tell me the moon is shining, show me the glint on broken glass. Like, I'd love to see what the sun looks like coming in through the window, you know? Let's go on to the next one. So this is anonymous and it's from a short story. Ooh, this is formatted in a way that makes me very excited. Okay. Part one, have you ever painted your brother? Love it, I, I'm already intrigued. In my mind, he seemed to only exist in pencil sketches of his lips, of his jacket lifting as he raises his arms, of his hands, of each of his fingernails. I wondered what he would think of me now. If he walked into my garden and saw us, you, me, and my unfinished portrait, if he thought of me at all. I like that it opens with a rhetorical question. I know some people don't like rhetorical questions. I'm not mad at them and I like it here. I'm gonna change in my mind, he only existed in pencil sketches. I think if you're saying in my mind and he seemed, if it's in your mind, obviously it seemed, you know? Of his lips, of his jacket lifting as he raises his arms, of his hands, of each I'm just gonna say of each fingernail because clearly they're his fingernails. I'm gonna change lifting. I'm gonna do some verb stuff here. Oh no, no, I'm gonna say of his jacket winging <laughs> because to me, if you're wearing like a jacket and it's like a baggy jacket, when you lift it, it creates like wings. I love verbs. Verbs are <laughs> everything to me. I'd die for them. Um, I think verbs are a religious experience. One really great way, if you struggle to think about use how to come up with creative verbs, you can replace the verb with an implied simile. So the sentence could go, his jacket lifting 
like wings as he raises his arms. So we could just say like wing, combine like wings and the verb. Look at his jacket winging. So, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say in angel winging. So I don't know why this this implication could be completely off, but I feel like that implies that either he's dead. <laughs> that implies that he's dead. If he's dead, I think you should keep that for the foreshadowing. But you could just leave it angel winging, or you could replace it with something else. But I just think that that's fun. What a verb that is. I'm sorry that I'm implicating you in my verb nonsense. I wondered what he would think of me now. Again, I'm gonna replace this with a colon. I just think it's a fun, punchy, and underutilized punctuation mark. Now, this could also be what would he think of me now if you prefer it without the filter. It took the better part of an hour for you to finish painting my face. I might just say for you to paint my face, but again, that might not be accurate to the time frame. I just like the punchiness of the phrasing. The hours of that afternoon slipped through our fingers in a light daze. I'm gonna compress this to just that afternoon. If that afternoon slipped through our fingers, the hours of it are slipping through your fingers. I think it's kind of the same meaning, just a bit more condensed, just more compressed, you know? So much of line editing is just asking yourself, how can I compress this a little more? Usually, not always, fewer words makes the words you have more impactful. As a general guideline, I'm gonna remove light. I think days implies that it's light, you know? I mean, I guess you could have a heavy days, but I feel like it's implied. Hmm, I do have a question about this. A daze. Okay, actually, I think we should do more. Slip, now I think about it. Slip through our fingers is a bit familiar. This is kind of a familiar phrase. Verging on cliche, it's just something that I think we have seen before. Consider rephrasing. I filled our iced tea. We walked through the winding path that made the garden feel like a forest. You could barely hear the cars on the main road. You could taste oxygen on your tongue. That sentence. I'm just gonna say that I love that. Never once did I get the impression you wanted something from me. I might just say I never got the impression you wanted something from No, actually I like the original phrasing more. It's more words, but I think it sounds better. Never once did I get the impression you wanted something from me. More than painting me and talking to me. Um, I don't know if this sentence is a bit contradictory. I mean, if you say, I never got the impression you wanted something from me, but then you are kind of saying that you did want something from me. It's just not something bad, you know? It's not, so, it's something simple. No, I'll leave that, I'll leave that. Again, in the back of my mind, I think this is another familiar phrase. This is one of those phrases that you'll see a lot. Like, in the back of my mind is extremely common, and so I think this is the type of phrase that we just use naturally because it's a natural part of our lexicon. But I think it has the two issues with fr this phrase and phrases like it. First of all, it's just that it's familiar. The reader can kind of check out more because they're not being surprised by the language. And I, don't, I especially don't want that for this piece because I think what's going on here is so interesting. But also, I think it's just not, like, you don't actually have something at the back of your mind. Like, you know, like, it's not actually really accurate to thought. So I'm just gonna say, again, familiar, consider rephrasing felt that I was in some way deceiving you. I think this is also, again, a bit of a, a gluey sentence. We've got the word that, we've got it felt. Honestly, we could probably just delete that in the back of my mind, like I was deceiving you. I'm gonna also delete in some way, just because it doesn't really add much, a bit of uncertainty, I guess, but I think that's already there by it felt like. We already know it's not necessarily the truth. It felt like I was deceiving you, but in that moment, I wanted nothing more than to stay here with you. I think maybe there's a missing word here. And watch you remake, specify it's. Again, this is another one where I'm not sure what the it's is, piece by piece on canvas paper. This is a really interesting excerpt. I'm very intrigued. Um, I would 100% read the rest of this. There's some portrait of a lady on fire shit going on and I'm here for that. All right, so maybe we'll try to do one more. I was sitting alone outside a picturesque bar in old San Juan. Moonlight illuminates the red umbrella above my table and casts shadows upon the quaint Spanish colonial buildings around me. Already, we've got lots of nice sensory detail. I'm going to punch up this verb, not because it's necessary, but because I want to, because I can't be stopped. You don't have to make all of your verbs insane like I do, but I just want to, for the sake of education, make this a funner verb. Do we want to imply that the moonlight is illuminating it 
almost like like if it's shining in from the back it's like the whole thing is glowing like a lantern or is it the edges because umbrellas have really like they have scalpel they have those like scalloped edges Ooh, moonlight scallops you could also say it ribs the red umbrella I'm gonna say that instead because I like that it's like tracing you know how like umbrellas have the little spokes I'll say or scallops <laughs> they can go wild cast shadows so this is I think another example of a bit of a familiar phrase and actually a bit of a familiar verb a lot of the time verbs are kind of just familiar like what verb do we think of when we think of the sun shining you know there are nouns that have inherent verbs paired with them and casts is a verb that goes inherently with shadow and I think we could maybe just make that I don't want to make it anything insane but I do want to just make it more original either more original or more subdued but when you have a familiar phrase like that I think it sticks out a bit moonlight ribs the red umbrella above my table and shadows the quaint Spanish colonial buildings around me there's some lovely atmosphere going on here. The stars twinkle playfully. Again, twinkle is also a bit of a familiar verb. When we think of the stars, what are they doing? They're twinkling or they're shining. So instead of the stars twinkle playfully, what I really want to do is condense twinkle playfully into one singular stronger verb. Flicker. The verb flicker in me go way back. Let's open up the source. Flicker, gleam, flare, glint, scintillate. That's a fun one if you want to go off the wall you could say scintillate shimmer wink Ooh, let's do wink i like wink the stars wink because wink also the playful like when you wink that's a playful gesture um you know winking implies that there is either like secret knowledge or that there's something like flirtatious going on and so i think if the stars are winking that makes them sound playful without having to say it so we could say the stars wink brimming with their secret knowledge of the night's mysteries as a personal preference i would cut this because I think it's a bit melodramatic. This is a common thing. You Usually personifying nature can seem melodramatic, especially when the natural elements are portrayed as having like wisdom, maybe replaced with, with another image. You know, the stars wink, something about the night sky or something. Maybe we could say against a sheet of navy or something, you know, just describe the sky or something. I took my journal out on a foolish impulse and began to write this. Oh, is this meta storytelling? Always here for some meta storytelling. I've been fighting the urge to write about yesterday, although I don't know why. It wasn't memorable. Exactly. Certainly not worth, I'm gonna say worthy of, I'm just gonna say certainly not worth immortalizing. And I'm gonna cut in writing because we already know that it's happening in writing or even being briefly remembered by my mortal mind. I, again, maybe a bit melodramatic. I think, you know, mortal mind, um, the kind of thing like you could hear like a fantasy villain saying, you know, you could be like, in your mortal mind. Okay, I'm also gonna do as a new paragraph. Yesterday I went to a wedding. It's also possible that this already was a new paragraph because um, I asked you guys to send these to me like literally over like Twitter and Instagram DMs, so. I, it broke them up and I had to guess at some of the paragraphing. It hadn't even been an important wedding. I'm gonna say it wasn't even. Honestly, that's just personal preference of phrasing. The bride and groom were friends of a friend. They had become husband and wife at the Sorales Castle down in Ponds. You can imagine the kind of wedding that was. Um, I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna just say complete with indoor fountains. Uh, Japanese should be capitalized and scenic landscape. I would specify the scenic landscape. You know, like what kind of scenic landscape, gorgeous, fairy tale like. I'm gonna make a note here. With more specificity, this might not be needed. It'll be conveyed in the image. My suggestion here would be instead of saying gorgeous fairy tale like, describe a gorgeous fairy tale like landscape. The kind of wedding that makes people forget what comes after marriage. <laughs> This narrator has a bit of sass, and I love it. I know what my parents would have said. I'm gonna cut if they've been there because I think that's implied. Looking at all the handsome couples, men dressed in Burberry suits, their hands, I'm gonna delete resting their hands on the lower backs of haughty women wearing Valentino and carrying Chanel. Mom would say that I could have been one of them, that I had wasted my brains studying English and wanting to be a writer. Ooh, the familial tension that emerges. She was constantly reminding me how other 
less intelligent people had gone on to study careers in technology and were earning. My parents, I'm just gonna say married very young. My parents married young, right out of high school. Specific, I'm gonna say three weeks out of high school. You know, like it's the summer after high school, they're getting married rather than right out of, which could mean a lot of things. You know, like right out of could be like a year, it could be days, and made countless sacrifices to raise me, to raise me on minimum wage. Dad worked all day. I would love to know what they do. Th this might come up in a moment, but what minimum wage job? There's a huge range of minimum wage jobs, and I think it would also help characterize like the lifestyle of a family more. Like You don't really need to say all day and then from sunrise to sunset, because that's all day. So we could just say dad worked every day, sunrise to sunset. I'm perplexed at how my brain has managed to remember details that seem so inconsequential. I'm changing this to I remember these seemingly inconsequential details. I just find that a bit punchier. Again, this is, that sounds like how I write. Like, I just put that in my writing style, I'm sorry. The trail of gray d dust he left on the floor every night. I'm just gonna say every night instead of when he came home because we know he comes home at night. The crust of cement, the cement crusted to his boots. The smell of sweat and freshly cut wood. So he does some kind of construction, I'm assuming. No matter how tired and sore he was, he always had a smile and a joke for me. Here's the thing. Now that I've read the rest of the sentence, I'm not convinced that these are inconsequential details. In fact, if this is something that happens every night, then it's probably not it's a consequential. These are consistent details from the character's childhood that I don't actually know the main character's gender, I don't think. I guess I just assumed the main character was a man. Anyways, we don't know. These are details that permeated their childhood. Every night, it was a childhood that was maybe tough. Parents weren't very home. Parents were struggling financially. So I don't think these are inconsequential. I'm just gonna say I remember the trail of because I don't think it is going to be inconsequential. Maybe the main character thinks it is. Maybe this is something that the author wants to work with is the main character interprets it as inconsequential, but it's actually important. But I, as the reader, I hear those details and I think, I understand why they would stand out, you know? I would add something like chopping wood, I don't know, like whatever he does to get that bit of extra detail. He always had a smile and a joke for me. I'm gonna make this, try to make this a bit more specific to the character. I would even name the paper you know, like the whatever gazette or something of the local papers humor section before he collapsed. I'm gonna delete down, down, um, you can often cut the word down. It's the same with the word up, it's like he stood up. You could just say he stood before he, you, you're not gonna collapse up, right? Um, before he collapsed on his bed. Now we know he had to do it all over again the next day. This I think is also a bit of a familiar phrase. I'm just gonna say again. It's not that much better, but it's subtle. It removes the all over again, which is a phrase we've heard before, but I don't really know how to edit it better than that, but I think this is fine. Mom developed painful varicose veins on her legs, dark purple and spider legs, from a lifetime of standing up. There's that up-down thing, from a lifetime of standing for eight hours a day as a grocery store cashier. I'm just gonna put pillows. Do we need to know that they're big pillows? I don't know, to me that's not maybe a worthwhile use of an adjective. I'm not anti-adjective. Actually, I love them. I sprinkle in adjectives all the time, but you still want to use ones that are interesting and effective, and I think big is not really earning. It's not an adjective that I think earns its place, in my opinion, when she came home from work. I'm going to change when she came home from work because I feel like the phrase came home from work is already, we've already kind of seen it with the dad. So I'm going to say the evening news. I don't know why. It could be something else that's more true to character. I think I'm just thinking that implies obviously she's come home from work. I would light lavender scented candles and make her chamomile tea. She calls me selfish because I went for an English program when in her opinion I could have bid an engineer or a lawyer. For some reason I like the rhythm more, more lawyer or engineer just because the three, um, the three syllable word after, that's just the way that my brain clocks the rhythm of that. It's not necessary or anything. There's no rule I'm Im implicating here. It's just my brain hears it and thinks it should be lawyer or engineer. Someone other than myself who could have done a better job at easing their burdens. What I want to know is, it seems like the main character has gone out of their way, been really supportive of their parents, and then their parents still aren't appreciating them. That's rough, you know? And I think I want to know what expectation is there. Who could have led a much better life than they did. Mm. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna delete much. Who could have led a better life? 
than they did. I wonder if this is from a novel or short story. I totally feel like it could be either. Uh, lots of good detail there. Little interesting frame going on. All right, I'm gonna end this here because um, I've been line editing for an hour. If I didn't get to yours in this video, I mean, obviously it's because there were way more than I would have a chance to get to, but I'm going to try to, in a future video, make this a series. I love line editing. I find it super fun. Um, but yeah, if yours was in here, if you don't like some of the edits I made, that is totally okay. I'm not the boss. I'm not the all-knowing uh, authority on line editing and what you can or can't do. That's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr, and I'll see you in another video.